Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dr. Derry, and today I'm gonna be showing you all how I made this super cute pink jumpsuit. I actually made this from a jumpsuit that I was given by my sister and it did not fit, so I kind of took it apart and I'm going to recreate this look. So if you would like to see how I did that, stay tuned. <laughs> The things you'll need to make this jumpsuit include about two and a half yards of fabric, a jumpsuit that you would like to recreate, some pattern paper so you can trace out the portion of the jumpsuit that you need to recreate. I'm going to be using McCall's 7198 pants pattern for this tutorial. You're going to need a rotary cutter, a cutting mat, and an acrylic ruler, and of course a pen and paper. And of course you're going to need a sewing machine. I will be using three different types of sewing machines in this video. but you. If you only have a sewing machine, that's perfectly fine, but I will be using a sewing machine, a cover stitch, and a serger for this video. All right, so let's get started. Okay, let's go ahead and get into making our jumpsuit. I took the jumpsuit apart. I did not show this on camera because I did it a few months ago, but I took the jumpsuit apart and I seam ripped everything. So I'm gonna show you all how I made the pattern for my top portion. I took the top portion, I folded it in half, and then I took this brown paper and I just basically traced around the top. I used a ruler to kind of help make some straight edges and then I also added a half inch seam allowance to the bottom and to the sides of the top. Now I'm gonna take this little bust piece and I'm gonna also copy that piece and I traced around that one as well. For this one, I also added a half inch seam allowance to that piece as well. And these two pieces are basically our main top pieces. Now it's time to start cutting some fabric. The first thing I'm gonna do with my fabric is fold it in half with the right sides together. I'm going to start by cutting straps for the top and right here I'm just gonna basically be making a straight edge because I'm going to be using my cover stitch machine to make the straps for my suit. So I'm going to be needing to cut out one inch strips. So I just want to make sure the, the edges are even before I begin to cut. Once the edges are even, I decided to go ahead and fold the fabric in half again. That way I didn't have that far to go and I can make sure that my um, strips are going to be straight and here I'm just cutting out one inch strips just to be safe I'm going to cut out three one inch strips so if you're doing this and you don't have a cover stitch machine go ahead and cut out one inch strips and just um, either serge or zigzag stitch those straps next I'm going to fold my fabric in half just once with the right size together and I'm going to cut out the fabric for the pants the way I'm going to do these pants is I'm going to add two inches to the bottom of the pants like so and since the edges are already straight I'm just going to move the pattern piece up two inches and then at the top I'm also going to add one inch because I want this to be a kind of a high waist and so here I'm just going to be pinning where I will be adding the one inch to the top and I'm just going to cut the pants out. I like to cut my fabric out on the floor. Um, it's not really ideal for your back, but this is just the way I like to cut my fabric out. Some people cut their fabric out on a big table. I don't have like a super big flat table. I do have two um, 
wooden tables that I have my sewing machines on, but they're covered with sewing machines. So I like to cut my fabric out on the floor just so everything is nice and flat. Next, I'm going to be cutting out the top portion and I'm just gonna fold over just a little bit of the fabric to cut this top piece on the fold. You don't need much fabric for this one, so I try to save as much fabric as possible, but I'm gonna cut two of these top pieces out and I'm cutting them both on the fold. Once we have that top piece, those two top pieces cut out, we're gonna cut out the little, I'm gonna call this the side bust. And I'm gonna cut four of these. So I'm gonna cut it out twice. I'm not cutting this on the fold. So I'm, since my fabric is already folded, I'm just gonna make two cuts and that'll give me four pieces total. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the straps that were on the back of the jumpsuit and I'm just gonna roughly cut around those straps. I am cutting this out on the fold, so make sure you cut it on the fold. And I'm gonna cut two straps out. Now that everything has been cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble and pin everything together for his first go round at the sewing machine. I'm gonna start with the pants. I'm gonna take a back leg pant piece and a front leg pant piece, and I'm gonna pin them right sides together. I'm gonna pin at the inner portion of the legs first, and this is where I will serge. For the straps, I am going to go ahead and pin them together. I'm going to pin it right sides together and I'll basically be serging the whole open side um, and I'm going to leave the very tip open so that I can flip the, st the strap inside out. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the straps because I will be using my cover stitch machine for the straps. I'm going to use my double fold bias binder to make the straps. And I've shown how I use this when I make my competition bikinis. So I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing. I'm gonna slide the fabric through the little loop. Um, and this basically makes an encasing. And this is perfect for straps. I use it for the straps on my bikinis as well. So that is what I'm gonna be doing for my straps. If you do not have a cover stitch machine, you can just serge a tube of fabric and then you can turn it inside out. So don't worry, you don't have to have a cover stitch machine, but you know, it does make life a little bit easier. I'm gonna go ahead and make two very long straps just to have long straps because you can always cut things off, but you can't add things. So I'd rather have it to be longer rather than shorter. Once the straps are made, I'm done with my cover stitch machine. I'm gonna move over to my serger and I'm gonna start by serging the back ties. Um, this is very, very simple. I'm just gonna 
go straight down that open edge I'm going to cut it once I'm done I'm going to go ahead and turn that um, back tie inside out and I'm going to repeat this for both ties Once the back ties are finished, I'm going to grab two of the side bust pieces and I'm going to sandwich the back tie in between two of those pieces. And then I'm going to pin that together because I'm going to sew around three portions of that side bust piece and that is going to enclose the back tie. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, you, you kind of see how I'm pinning it and I'm going to, of course, you know, show where I'm going to be sewing at. Once you're done doing this part, you'll see what I'm talking about. They should both look like this. And now we're going to do the final assembly for the top. I'm going to take one of the top pieces and I'm going to take the side bust and back tie and I'm going to pin that to the top. At this point, it really doesn't matter which side is the right side and which side is not because we're kind of doing a double sided thing here so it doesn't really matter at this point so go ahead and just pin that to the top Once those side bust pieces are pinned to the top, then I'm going to go ahead and add the straps to the top portion of the top. Once we have everything in place where we want it pinned on the first top, we're going to grab the second additional top piece and we're going to sandwich everything in all together. We're going to sew all of the openings except for the bottom portion. So we want to make sure that the straps are hanging down through the bottom part because we don't want to sew the straps onto this top. So make sure the straps are hanging down. This part is very, very tricky. So go as slow as you need to go. Pause the video here if you need to, but yeah, definitely make sure the straps are hanging at the bottom. So when we turn it right sides out, then the straps will still be free.
once you have everything pinned in place for the top now we can take this over to our serger we're going to serge all of the openings closed except for the bottom part so just only the areas where my finger is outlining right now Once you're done serging the top portion together, you're going to want to go ahead and pull everything out and we're going to flip it right side out. So now this is where you'll start to develop a front and back piece because the way my straps are made, there is a front and a back to my straps. So this will tell me which way is my front and which way is my back. And this is what your top should look like. Everything should be sandwiched in and it should be enclosed all neat nice and neat and it just looks pretty good it just looks good to me i mean it definitely gives it a finished look and it makes it a little bit more sturdy once i'm done with that i'm going to go ahead and top stitch the neck hole portion of the top and i feel like it just gives it a more cleaner neater finished look also i'm going to go ahead and press the seams and everything so i press out the back ties i press the top and everything just to flatten out those seams Alrighty, so the top portion of the jumpsuit is done. We're gonna move on to the pants. We already pinned the pants insides together, so we're gonna go ahead and serge that inner portion of those pants. Once you've surged both parts of the pants, we're gonna open those up and you'll kind of see how it looks. It's like, this is one pant leg here. I'm gonna take the other pant leg and I'm gonna place it on top, right sides together, and I'm gonna pin it together, making sure that the crotch lines up. We wanna make sure that crotch seam lines up together. Once we have that crotch area lined up and pinned, we're gonna go ahead and serge that little U-shaped opening.
Once we're done serging that crotch area, we're gonna turn the pants and we're going to make sure we have them right sides together. And this is where you will begin to see the pants actually starting to form. We're gonna make sure we line up the leg pieces together. And this is when we're gonna pin the outer portion of, of the legs. We're gonna take it back to the serger and we're gonna serge the outer leg portion. Once I finish serging the outer leg portion, I'm going to go ahead and serge around the bottom of the pant legs and this will help me with getting ready to hem the bottom of the pants. I like to go ahead and hem my pants and everything before I get it all assembled because it just makes it a little bit easier. So go ahead and serge the bottom holes of the pants. To finish the bottom of the pants, I'm going to fold the fabric up about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to pin all the way around to make sure that my hem is nice and even. And to finish this hem off, since this is stretch fabric, I'm going to go ahead and use a zigzag stitch. Alrighty, so now that the pants are pretty much done, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the top portion of the pants because we need to make a waistband. So once I have the measurement of how wide my pants are at the top, I'm going to take my extra fabric and I'm going to measure, I have it folded in this um, clip here, it's folded together. I'm going to measure how wide my pants were and then I'm gonna measure four inches down. I'm gonna be using one and a half inch thick elastic so I'm gonna make my waistband about two inches just to give me um, enough room for like a little bit of a seam allowance so I'm gonna cut out a tube that is the same size as the waist and it's gonna be four inches tall once I have that I'm going to sew so close the little opening to make a tube Once I had the two parts sewed together, like here, I did not show that part, but I surged it together. 
I'm going to fold the waistband in half and I'm going to have wrong sides together like so. And it's gonna basically make a two inch tube. And I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine. I'm gonna use a straight stitch at the longest stitch length, which I believe is five on my machine. And I'm gonna do a basting stitch all the way around, but I'm gonna leave a little opening at one end so I can feed my elastic through the waistband. So this is just a basting stitch to kind of hold it closed before we serge everything all together. Once we have our basting stitch in place, I'm gonna use a safety pin to thread my elastic through the waistband. Now I took the elastic and I measured it around my waist and I measured it to where it will be snug and fit kind of close, you know. I measured it, I made the elastic probably about two inches smaller than my actual waist because I want it to be snug. So that's how I measured my elastic. And I'm just gonna go ahead and feed it through the tube like so. Once I have the elastic fed through, I'm going to overlap the ends and I'm going to zigzag stitch the elastic closed. And then I'm gonna pull it all the way through the tube so that you can't see the elastic. Alrighty, so this next part is the most tricky part of this jumpsuit. I did this literally probably three different times just because it took me a while. So I'm gonna lay the pants out and I'm going to next take the top. I'm going to take the bottom of the top and I'm gonna fold it in half so I can kind of get the center point. And where that center point is, is where I'm going to line it up to the front seam of the pants. And so I'm going to make sure I pin that little center point to the front seam of the pants. And then I'm going to pin the rest of the top to the pants. And you want to make sure this is flat. The top is flat to the pants. Once I have the top pinned to the pants, it's now time to pin the waistband. So you're going to do pants, top, and then waistband on, on top, which is last. For the front, you want to put the waistband on flat. You don't want any stretch of the waistband for the front portion. If you have any stretch in the waistband of the front portion, it's going to distort the top when you put the pants on. So make sure you pin the elastic waistband to the front with no stretch. You're gonna do all the stretching for the back half of the pants. I hope that makes sense, but yeah, I know it's kind of hard to see because the fabric is like, you know, so it's the same color. So it's kind of hard to see me doing this, but I made sure to pin the front waistband from side seam to side seam. I made sure to pin that portion flat. There was no stretch in the waistband at the front of the suit. The only stretch of the waistband is at the back. It literally took me three tries to get this waistband to work right. And the last one was when I discovered that I needed to make the front part flat and all the stretch in the back. So yeah, I was getting frustrated. It took me a day or two to figure it out. But once you have all that pinned, we're then going to take it over to the surgery for the final portion of the suit. We're going to carefully surge 
this part. So making sure you're not stretching the front of the suit. I'm gonna start at the one of the front side seams and I'm gonna surge all the way across to the second side seam. When I get to the back portion, this is when I'm going to start to stretch the fabric. So my arm is gonna be kind of in the way because I'm stretching the fabric, but I'm stretching as far as I can go so I can make sure that the stretch is all in the back. Sorry guys, I really hope that makes sense. I know it sounds really confusing, but yeah, stretch only in the back. Alrighty, and then lastly for the strap, in the beginning I thought I was going to make the straps kind of like a bra strap and make it where you could adjust it, but if you want to do that, you need to do that before you attach the strap to the top. I didn't realize that, so I ended up just having to go ahead and get my husband to help me measure out where I wanted my strap to go. I ended up making my straps 10 inches long, and I made sure I measured both of my straps to be 10 inches long. And then I cut the excess off. Once I cut out the excess strap, I'm going to pin about a half an inch from the seam of the back tie and the side bust seam. So I measured half an inch and I pinned it there. Then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna close it off with a zigzag stitch. And that's it guys, we are done. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you all liked this sewing tutorial. I hope I explained it well. I tried to do the best that I could. But anyways, I hope you guys like it. If you would like to see more sewing videos, let me know down below in the comment section. If you like it, comment down below. Let me know and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.